Now let's take a look at how to model in Maya LT. We're going to focus in this course on polygonal modeling, which is most appropriate for games. Now Maya LT also supports another form of modeling called NURBS modeling, and you can get all of the information from that in the essential training. So let's just go ahead and focus on polygons for now. So polygonal models can be created using a number of ways. So we can go into the create menu and we can go into what's called polygon primitives and just select what type of model we want. Or we also have a shelf called polygons and that allows us to again, create and manipulate all of these different objects. So I'm gonna use the create menu and let's go ahead and go into that. Now, one of the things that you might not know about Maya is that we can tear off menus. So any menu that has a double line at the top can be torn off. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight that double line and left click. So now I've torn off this menu. So you can see that this menu here is exactly the same as this floating window here. So let's go ahead and focus on sphere. Now we can create spheres as simply as just left clicking on the option and it brings up that sphere. Now, if I want, I can do a little bit more control over that by clicking on this box. Now, every menu option in Maya should have something similar to this. So if I click on this box, it brings up the options for that particular item. So in this polygon sphere options, I can change the radius of the sphere as well as the number of divisions or the amount of detail in the sphere as well as whatever axis I want it to be facing. So if I want to, I can dial this in and hit create, and now it will create a sphere that's aligned differently with a little bit more detail. Now, sometimes you may want to create uh, your objects a little bit more interactively. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit delete and delete that sphere. And in this menu, we have a checkbox called interactive creation. So, if I check that on, and again, you can see how that checks on here in the normal menu, then I can interactively create the sphere. So it tells me to drag on the grid. So all I have to do is left click and drag, and I can create a sphere of any size that I want. Now, once the sphere is created, I can go back to change things. So we can do that in one of two places. I'm gonna go over to the attribute editor, and you'll notice here, I've got a tab called Polysphere. And this will give me the radius as well as the number of subdivisions in that sphere. So I can dial up or down the radius. I can add or subtract detail to that sphere. And I can change a number of other parameters. So if you create something and it's not quite right, you don't have to recreate it from scratch. You can just hop over to the attribute editor and dial in the detail you want. Now, all of these same options are also available in the channel box. So if I go over to channel box here and scroll down just a little bit, you'll see that I have an input here called polysphere one. And again, the major controls here are exposed. So if I highlight radius, I can type in whatever number I want or I can highlight the name, middle click and drag, and that becomes a slider. Same for subdivisions. I can middle click and drag, or I can just type in a number and add or subtract detail. Now this works the same for almost any object in Maya. We were just focusing on the sphere, but we can do other objects as well. So for example, we have a cube, which is actually more of a box, and if we keep interactive creation on, when we click cube, it'll again give us a hint. So we drag out the base and then left click and drag again to set the height. And over in the attribute editor and the channel box, we have our inputs here for polycube one. So I'm gonna go into the attribute editor, find polycube one, and again, we can change all of our parameters. We can add or subtract detail and we can affect that however we want. So again, whatever you create, you can change later in the channel box or the attribute editor. Let's take a look at a few more of these. We have a cylinder, 
which again allows us to drag up base and height, very similar to the cube. The cone, again, base and height. Another important one, and you'll be using this a lot, is the plane, which is basically just a flat surface. Here, I'm gonna go ahead and move that up. So that's just a basic plane. We also have the torus, which allows us to drag out the radius and then drag out the diameter or the section radius of that torus or donut shape. Another cool one here is the pipe. So pipe is kind of a three level creation process. So we create the outer, then the height, and then the thickness. So let's try that one more time. With the pipe, we're gonna create the diameter of the pipe, height of the pipe, and then the thickness. And a couple more that we have here, we have what's called the helix. And that's great for, well, for springs or whatever. And then again, we can change the number of coils and then we can change the diameter. Let's try that one more time. So basically what you do is you create your radius, your height, number of turns, and then your thickness or your section radius. Okay, so that's a great way to create springs or any number of other objects that have this shape. We also have a soccer ball, which is basically just a sphere with hexagons and pentagons as its axes. That might be an easier way to create a sphere. And then finally, we have what are called platonic solids. And if we click on those, you'll see that it creates that one there, but we can change the type of solid in the attribute editor. So if we go to platonic solid one, we can change it from a dodecahedron to an icosahedron to an octahedron and to a tetrahedron. So we've got all of these different basic solids that we can work on. And when again, we can change the, the side lengths and the radius for all of these. So as you can see, these are just basic objects. Now these are typically the basis from which you create additional objects. And we can do that by manipulating the shape of the objects or by adding detail. And that's called the modeling process. So let's go ahead and dig a little bit further into how to reshape polygonal objects.